For diffuse reflectance sampling, we're going to need to do a little bit of sample preparation. Before I do that, I just want to show this. This is the slider, which is going to be used for the sample. Different drifts accessories can be approached in different ways. Some of them will have a slider or something that goes at the top of the accessory and the light is directed down. Others, the sample goes underneath. In this case, the sample goes underneath where the beam comes in. So this is the slider that has a gold mirror on it that I could use as a reference. You would just slide it in and it has two detents or stops where it slides in. There's the first one and there's the second one. I'm mainly going to be working with this one though because I want to fill the cups for use over at the spectrometer. So what I want to do is prepare my sample by grinding it up using potassium bromide powder and a mortar and pestle. Now I've already ground up the potassium bromide itself so this is going to be used as the standard. So this is going to go in the front position. That's going to be my standard solution or my standard uh, powder for the analysis. And then I'm going to make here the powder for the sample. Now the critical thing here is that I want my sample to be dilute, say about 5% of the crystal or so. So I'm going to dump in about that much KBR. So you can see how much I've got in there, just a little pile at the bottom. Okay, seal that up. Because KBR is hygroscopic, I don't want to leave this out unsealed. I'm going to take my sample, which again is just a little bit of sugar, the turbinado, very coarse sugar. So you can see, and I've just got a few granules, not much more. Okay, and then I'll put that over to the side. So that's my sample ready to be ground. Now the grinding is going to do two things. First of all, it's going to make the crystal size or the particle size consistent. It's going to give me a more diffuse reflecting surface. And secondly, it also serves to homogenize the sample, to mix the sample and the potassium bromide together in there into the powder. So that should be good. I've got as you can see now, it's a very fine powder now, almost to the point of being dust-like, which is what I want, a very fine powder. Okay, so now I'm going to take that powder and I'm going to lift out some of it and I'm going to put it into the rear of the two cups. That's going to be my sample in the back. And in just a minute, I'm going to return to that cup. And finish. Then I'm going to wipe off my spatula just because I don't want to contaminate my potassium bromide with sample. So here I have potassium bromide. I'm going to put that in the front window or front cup. Okay. It doesn't matter if I spill right now because my last step in my preparation is going to be to level the surface. So I'm just going to take my tool here and drag it along the surface. Do the same back here, dragging it all on the surface, make sure it's filled in, and then I'll just scrape off the excess from around the outside edges, which I should be able to do using the spatula without disturbing the sample itself. And if I leave some particles on it, it really won't matter because the optics of this accessory are above the sample, not below it. So any sample that falls off doesn't end up in the optics of the instrument. There's also a little bit of powder down the middle. Maybe that side can get rid of that. Yep, there you go. So now I'm ready to go. I've got my potassium bromide in the front. I've got my potassium bromide mixed with sample in the back. You can actually see just a tiny bit of yellow tinge in the back from where I'm sitting anyway. You can see it's slightly yellow uh, because of the sugar. And then we're going to take this over to the lab. We're going to insert this into the spectrometer along with the accessory and we're going to see what we get for a search result from collecting data on it. So that's the preparation of drifts. The key things, first of all, the grinding to make sure you have really fine, almost a powder, very fine powder, uh, not crystals. You shouldn't see a lot of crystals. You should see a powder. And also that you don't add too much sample. I'm going to stress that every time we talk about drifts. One of the main problems with it is people just use too much sample and then your peaks go off scale. The spectra look funny, they had extra bumps in them, whatever, because there's just too much absorption. Be careful. Use about 3 to 5 percent, up to around 10 percent of sample is about the maximum. So that's it. We're ready to go over to the lab and try running this on the spectrometer.